So uh, thanks, uh, Dimitri, for this. This is very, very uh, enlightening because uh, we assume that, oh, uh, industries are completely cannot be classified at all. This uh, sheds some light on, on what you can look at. So one of the related questions I have, I think partially answer, I got the answer from your explanation of the music industry is, uh, if I am a company and I look through this list and I don't find it, uh, what do I do? How do I find out uh, what will be my typical product evolution cycle uh, time and what is the product process evolution cycle time and what is the organization evolution time? How, how will I get a fair estimate of the three uh, if the, it's not there in, uh, my company is not in this list? Yeah, usually uh, this is exactly uh, the point. How do we define the scope of our system? And uh, we already discussed that uh, the scope of the system we define first of all through its function. And we already discussed that the function, the function uh, represent what do we process? We process the input to the output. Okay. And how can we, how can we find uh, how we can find our industry among this limited list. For instance, the semiconductor industry, what they process, they process the data and information. Okay, and if our system process data and information, probably our system will be in this uh, part of industries like personal computers. But if for instance, we are talking about system which uh, process um, the food, different kind of food or different kind of vegetables. This will be close to the industry like agriculture and beverage. So on the level of the system, on the level of definition of the function, what do we process? Okay, what do we process? will help us to identify in which industry we are. For instance, airline companies, what do they process? They transport passengers. If we are talking about, for instance, railroad industry, if we are talking about any kind of transportation which process passengers, which move them from one area to another one, whatever way we are talking about, they have high probability to appear in this uh, group of industries. This is a general guideline. How do we how do we use this uh, this list? For instance, if you are going to if you are going to predict the future of uh, currency. Uh, one, one group of students uh, with, with whom I worked, they tried to predict uh, the future of Bitcoins, for instance. So we, what do they process? They process something like uh, what is processed by diamond mines, the means which concentrate them. Is it okay for answering your question? Yes, this uh, definitely gave me a direction to think uh, when it when choosing which ones to choose from. Um, I, I have another question is, uh, now given this information mm -hmm. about uh, uh, the three buckets, so if I work for a company and I'm one of the decision makers, how do I use this information? So now that I know this is my product evolution time. This is my process, and this is my organization. How do how do I uh, use it in my own company? That's that's one question. I, I have the second one after this. Yeah, the decision maker is not going to use this information. This information is useful for uh, people who are building forecast, because the decision maker, they usually are going to use the result of forecast, the forecasting. Those models that I introduced about uh, life cycle, technology, and uh, season uh, and life cycle and clock speed, they're useful to produce forecast. They're useful within forecasting process. So the decision maker, the decision maker, 
uh, is going to use the result of forecast. Of course, it's a good idea if decision maker will have um, okay some ideas how this forecast was developed, what are the seasons, what are the different seasons, and why the forecast suggests uh, those or that result in this time. So, but those are the models which are useful for reliable forecast. Okay, thank you so much. That that uh, actually helped me clarify saying these are two sets of people, decision makers and forecasters. This is most useful for if you're a forecaster, but it'll help as a decision maker. I, I totally agree with you. Uh, one yeah. follow-up question on this, and, and I really, uh, uh, I mean, we have had so many discussions on this, but I still mm -hmm. want to bring this up, is that uh, particularly with cars, uh, I saw, noticed that the organization uh, cycle time is 10 to 15 years. Does that mean they have to start rethinking, uh, reinventing themselves? Or See, because car uh, companies, we know many uh, of those big companies have lasted for a lot longer than that. Does this information mean that uh, they are uh, reinventing themselves once every 10, 15 as an organization? Is, is that how I would interpret that? Yeah. Uh, thank you for this question, because we, uh, here we, 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 need, we need to understand that uh, each kind of technology which replaced previous one, uh, as soon that we define technology as a synergy, of hardware, knowledge, and skills, plus hardware organization. We, in fact, we cannot introduce new technology without changing organization. But the speed of changing on the organization is slower. And inside of the car companies, which exist, for instance, for 100 years, the changes on the organizational level, they are essential in order to support the new model of product. It is not only the new skills, how to produce and how to use it, but it is also the new organizational changes. And if you look, for instance, inside of the companies, inside of the companies which exist more than 10 and 15 years, okay, they reorganize themselves inside by units with this with this speed so so that's why uh, we cannot separate for instance introduction of a uh, new kind of recording uh, technologies um, without without changes of the process and without changes on the organization which is behind if you like organization, uh, this is a business context. This is a how do you run the business? How do you run uh, the management of human resources? And usually it has to be uh, well coordinated and well connected. But sometimes it is faster to change the process. Okay, uh, sorry, but sometimes uh, it is uh, not so easy to change the process, like with uh, brewery, because the process is very traditional. When uh, at the company level, sometimes we have companies which pop up much faster than the new process, or organization are changing. Organization, this is a structure which support the development, production, delivery, use and recycling uh, of our technology. Is it okay for, for clarifying your question? Yes, yes, this is uh, very clear. In fact, it led me to another question, uh, is uh, particularly the one that you pointed out, which is uh, I'm looking at fast food and agriculture. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, Wow, fast food evolution will depend on agricultural uh, evolution also. So how do we rationalize this kind of interdependencies? And I'm fresh off this video about uh, interdependencies and forming a system. 
And here we are looking at two systems which have interdependency. How, how do we, uh, say if I'm in the fast food industry, how do I rationalize this uh, with the developments that are going in agriculture? Because it affects me. Yeah, what is interesting in this table, this is a result of empirical study. And what is interesting also uh, that uh, if you look carefully, like uh, your question about agriculture and fast food, we can see that uh, this um, interrelation, they are not linear. It means the speed of changes in the process in agriculture does not uh, produce the same speed of changes in a fast food. Okay. And uh, in agriculture, uh, in fact, there are changes of the process which appear regularly. And now we start to be aware about these changes and assume that the concern about uh, used pesticide and used you know, uh, technologies, uh, how do they pollute uh, environment? How do they make impact to the quality of water? And so we, we start to aware that we have a huge changes in agriculture. When the fast food industry, this is, uh, this is industry which process, process uh, another thing because in agriculture, we process uh, the energy in order to get uh, some fruits, some vegetables, uh, some results, okay? When uh, in the fast food, we take those and we pr pr process it in order to, to have something which are consumable by, uh, by human being on the level of society, on the level of society. So you look uh, to the result of this empirical uh, search and you can see that it is not linear. It is not linear. And this is, to me, this is a, a very, very interesting uh, to look on these uh, numbers uh, like you asked about. Thank you. Okay, thank you. This chat is extremely interesting. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm sure our learners will uh, have a lot more questions also about this particular chat. Because it has uh, is loaded quite. Uh, loaded yeah, chart. we need we need not to complicate too much to find the reasoning, because uh, you know the uh, the complexity of interaction in system. Uh, if we just increase it. Uh, we'll arrive, uh, we will arrive with a complexity to situation that it is not predictable. But for the prediction, we use the equilibrium between empirical study, between something that we measure, and we try to uh, simulate using logistic curve. Even we don't know all the reasoning, we have to be capable to predict. Yeah. But in which in which uh, time horizon this is the main idea of this table to share with you.